What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And the New York Giants just loaded up on playmakers in the 2023 offseason, went out, traded for Darren Waller, went out, signed Paris Campbell. They, they also re-signed um, Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard. So this is a full arsenal of weapons that the Giants have ready for the 2023 season, but apparently they're not done. They're still interested in a lot of the top wide receiver prospects in this upcoming draft class. They're taking hard looks at guys like Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jordan Addison, and meeting and having dinner with some of these players as well. So the Giants are not done getting a full arsenal of weapons for Daniel Jones trying to build out this offense and I'm really excited by this because as you all know if you've been keeping up with the channel keeping up with the show there's a lot of these wide receivers in this draft class that Alex and I really like and a couple of which the Giants have been meeting with very recently so despite adding all these playmakers the Giants are still in on the top wide receivers in the draft class and that could be the move with the 25th overall pick so we're going to discuss the breaking news surrounding the Giants and some of these wide receiver prospects dive into it what it means for the team leading into April as we get closer to the NFL draft. But before we do, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode and subscribe to the channel if you're new and ring the bell so you don't miss that episode. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today? And what are your thoughts on the Giants continuing to scout some of these top wide receiver prospects? I'm doing great, man. And look, the more offensive weapons we get, the more high potent offense we're going to have, high octane offense we're going to have. And that's the more happy I'm going to be because I want to see this team score points. In today's day and age, defense, very important, very, very important. But... The offense has seemingly taken more of a, a center stage. You know, a lot of the top coaches in the league are offensive-minded. Brian Dable, Andy Reid. Um, you know, you look at so many across the board. Sirianni, like, they all are just ingrained in the offensive side of things. And the ones that are more defensive, like, you look at, like, the Patriots have, what, Matt Patricia, or whoever, Matt Patricia calling plays last year or somebody. Like, they have defensive guys calling plays, and it's not working out. And obviously, they're not able to score as many points as they'd like. And the Giants have themselves a really, really great young uh, group of coaches with Mike Kafka and Dable, um, you know, kind of taking things. And um, I think they have Shea Tierney as a quarterback's coach as well. So, you know, you have a lot of really great coaches there. Now you're starting to pair it with quality talent. Last year, obviously, had a very low percentage of that. But as you mentioned, Darren Waller should add, you know, wide receiver one value if he can stay healthy. And then you have Paris Campbell, who's got speed. You bring back uh, Shep. You bring back Darius Slayton. Um, you know, you you have some other pieces that you're going to add, hopefully, in the draft. But the Giants are doing their due diligence. And it's not just like a scout here, a scout there. They're sending the freaking crop. They're sending the freaking load of, of scouts. They're sending Shane. They're sending Dable. They're sending, uh, you know, Kafka. They're sending everybody to see these top receivers. So, you know, call me crazy, seems like they're interested. You know, <laughs> you're looking at Jackson Smith and Jigwa, you're looking at Jordan Addison, the 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 um, interest in them is very obvious, right? JSN apparently was wearing a Giants hat today, and he was he was walking lockstep with Joe Shane. So you're talking about the Giants are, are really getting to know these top receivers. It is very obvious that they want one of them. Question is, are they going to trade up for one of them? Like, how are they going to get one of these guys, especially if they're at 25 and, you know, some of them are already off the board? Are they willing to move up if one drops uh, low enough? I don't think it would cost a ton to move up, five, six, seven spots in my opinion. Um, but if you if you go and make that move, you got to be damn sure that you're getting someone that's going to make an impact immediately. JSN profiles is a little bit more of a power slot, but he's got the ability to go to the outside as well. He can be a tremendous asset. Jordan Addison, he can play inside and out. He's got some good size. You know, he's got some really good athleticism, quick twitch abilities, and obviously has been very productive throughout his career. You know, what are you feeling right now knowing that the Giants are putting in a lot of effort to scout these top receivers and that they're not just sending one or two scouts. They're sending the whole staff. They're sending the most important decision makers in the organization to help Daniel Jones become the best quarterback he can be and capitalize on a big investment in hopefully what is the future of this quarterback, the future of this team at quarterback. And Daniel Jones, you know, he's never had a wide receiver one. He's never had this type of weaponry. He's always had to rely on his legs. He's always had to rely on Darius Slayton beating guys downfield. And, you know, that chemistry obviously doesn't go unnoticed. And, of course, I didn't even mention Isaiah Hodgins yet coming back and making an impact here. Talking about depth, you know, you have, let's say, let's just say it's any wide receiver, one top receiver in the draft. You got Isaiah Hodgins, you got Darius Slayton, you got Paris Campbell and Darren Waller, and then you have a plethora of depth as well with guys like Sterling Shepard. So you feel really good right now about where the Giants are going and knowing that they're disinterested in the top receivers, it certainly is getting me excited about the potential of adding another big weapon to this offense. 
Yeah, me too, man. I'm super excited about it. And I think when you look at their interests and in guys like Jackson Smith and Jigba in particular, I mean, the Giants fine dining and whining with Jackson Smith and Jigba. They took him out to dinner on Tuesday night ahead of his pro day today. And he had a good pro day. He ran a solid 40 yard dash time around the 4.5, which is exactly where scouts were hoping he would land. So Jackson Smith and Jigba looks really good right now. And he low key looks like the Giants' favorite target because if you take a look at it on Tuesday at USC, they had the pro day with Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison didn't have that many people in attendance. The Giants weren't there. I mean, they all 32 teams attended the Pro Day, but the Giants sent nine representatives to Ohio State's Pro Day. Now, I get it. Ohio State has a lot more pro-ready talent there. They have some offensive linemen to take a look at, some defensive players to take a look at. They just have a lot of prospects that were worth taking a look at. But the Giants being the second most represented team at Ohio State's Pro Day, that says a lot. I think they're trying to get as many eyes on possible on two guys in particular. Their center, Joe Whiteplier and uh, of course, JSN. I think they want to get all of the scouts' eyes on him, take a look at this guy and say, is he worthy of that 25th overall pick? Or more so, is he worthy of trading up from 25 near the top 10 or into the top 15 to draft JSN? I think that's really what they're trying to determine here. Again, that's speculative, but that's just what it looks like to me because they're taking him out to dinner. They're giving him a hat. They've got nine scouts out there taking a look at JSN. He seems like a player that the Giants are really interested in, and it makes sense. Look at all of the receivers on the Giants roster right now. Many of them are slot guys who are just really good route runners, good separators. The Giants got by last year without having a lot of speed. They just added some speed with guys like Darren Waller, guys like Paris Campbell, but they don't need speed at the receiver position to get by and to have success in this offense. What they need is guys who can run good routes and get open. And you could make the argument that no one's better at that than JSN. I mean, look at the numbers that he put at the combine. No one ran a faster 20-yard shuttle. No one ran a faster three cone. He had the best agility drills out of anyone in the entire 2023 NFL scouting combine. And that translates directly to route running, agility, getting open, creating space against man-to-man cornerbacks. That's where Jackson Smith and Jigbo wins. And that's what the New York Giants are looking to capitalize on. That's why I think they're scouting him so heavily. But it's also worth noting that he's not the only receiver that they're scouting. They're also scouting Jordan Addison. Now, I know I just said that the Giants didn't send everybody to USC to watch him. They prioritize Ohio State. And, you know, that makes sense. Ohio State has been churning out pros year in and year out, really good players. But at USC, they did send some representatives. And Jordan Addison kind of dropped a little bit of a bomb there saying that the team that he spoke to most recently and it was the New York Giants. And he said that in a response to a question where he was asked about who have you spoken to most frequently? He said he won't tell us who he's spoken to most frequently, but most recently, the New York Giants were the team that he heard from. So Jordan Addison seems like he's hearing from the Giants on a somewhat regular basis here. Again, a little speculative, but I know that the New York Giants are interested. They did meet with Addison at the 2023 NFL Scouting Combine. Addison said that he would love to play for the New York Giants. The Giants clearly have a lot of interest in all of the top receivers. And even think back to the Combine, Alex, they also met with Quinton Johnston, whose pro day has yet to happen, but I'm sure that the Giants are going to be there. They're going to be represented, and they're going to be talking to Johnston when TCU does have their pro day. So, Taking a look at all this news, putting it all together, there's really one one conclusion that I'm drawing from this, and that it's that wide receiver is still the Giants' top priority when we get to the first round of the 2023 NFL Draft. That's what it looks like to me. I know after free agency, a lot of analysts, Alex, they pivoted. They said, okay, the Giants might go offensive line. They might go cornerback. But there's some good offensive linemen and some good cornerbacks who are having pro days, and we don't hear the Giants and all of the buzz around those prospects like we do with the wide receiver. So Alex, what are you thinking that the Giants are planning here? Does it look to you the same way that it looks to me, like wide receivers still their number one target in the draft? Or do you think that maybe they're just doing their due diligence and they could turn around and, you know, start scouting some of these corners and offensive linemen a little bit more heavily in the coming weeks? I mean, look, reality is, is like, if you ask any of the fans, it's like, okay, we're definitely going for... A receiver, you know, like that's the pretty much the general consensus across the board, and I think that's pretty fair to, to assume. Um, but I wouldn't rule out cornerback. I think as we've seen, the Giants have also looked at quarterbacks, you know what I mean? Like they're doing their due diligence across the board, it's not just receiver. So, you know, when you ask me that question, it more so points leads me to say they're just doing a good job, 
like they're doing what their job entitles and requires to know about every player. Because if one guy drops, why is he dropping? You know, should we trade up for someone that we really believe in? Um, there's a lot of different things to to consider and, and a lot of different variables uh, to have at the forefront of your mind when considering all of the different players that are available and who could be a good fit. What do we need right now? Is the value there? They have the luxury of going BPA. So they just want to know who is the best player available at this point. Is it going to be a cornerback? Is it going to be a receiver? You know, how do we value them? How do we grade them based on the personalities? Are they a culture fit? Culture seems to be a pretty big uh, one for us now. So I think that's also important to kind of throw into the mix. We've gotten a lot of guys who just were not culture fits. Think about Kadarius Tony, DeAndre Baker. How many players just shot themselves in the foot, almost literally? Um, <laughs> and, you know, that's that's kind of where we are now is like, you want to bring in guys that are going to be a benefit to the entire roster in the clubhouse and and be a good person. And they're, they're going to be, you know, capable of taking on the New York media and not fighting with fans and this and that. And I think that's just as important sometimes as being able to fit the culture of the team and what they can do on the field and, you know, being proactive and wanting to work. They want to be football players, right? So I think the Giants certainly are looking for guys like that now. Um, they know Darius Slayton is like that. They know Hodgins is like that. They know Daniel Jones is like that. They know Saquon Barkley is like that. Think about that. All of our key guys are ones that want to be here. They want to play for the New York football Giants. They want to be the best. Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal. These are all phenomenal humans, let alone players. So if I was to go out and say who I think the Giants will go at, look at the guy who really fits the, the molds the best. Look at their personalities. Look who is going to work. And I I would imagine that little that little bit of a catalyst, that little bit of a variable may push them up the board on the, for the Giants. So um, I think all these guys, that's the problem though. Like Jordan Addison, great guy. JSN, great guy. Zay Flowers, tremendous guy. Quentin Johnson, amazing dude. How do you pick between all these guys? They're such good people. Um, so I think, but that's a good problem to have, right? It's a good problem to know. You're not getting a troublemaker. You're not getting someone that's not going to care. All these guys give a crap. All these guys want to play for the New York Giants. They want to play in the NFL. They want to be the best. So no matter which direction you go, you're going to get someone like that. And I think that's a really good situation to be in. 1,000%. It is a great situation. But let's talk about a situation that the Giants are taking themselves out of, Alex. I want to hear your thoughts on this because I know that you were big time on the DeAndre Hopkins to Big Blue train, right? And now Jordan Rannon is saying of ESPN, he said yesterday that, you know, taking a look at how the Giants were fine dining with Jackson Smith and Jigba, doing so much due dil diligence at the receiver position. Uh, Jordan Rannon said, quote, adding a wide receiver near the top of the draft remains a likelihood for the Giants. Don't listen to anyone telling you that they're trading waiting for DeAndre Hopkins or signing OBJ at this point, end quote. So, Alex, I got to get your take on that because I know that you really wanted to see Hopkins in a Giants uniform. I kind of really wanted to see OBJ in a Giants uniform, but I let that dream go like last week anyway. But it looks like the Giants are kind of positioning themselves right now to forego the opportunity to trade any draft assets, to sign any wide receivers. They're trying to build that core through the draft. They added some talent, you know, they got Paris Campbell, they extended uh, Darius Slayton, like I mentioned. So they got talent to the wide receiver core, but now the rest of those pieces, they're looking for through the draft. And I do think that that makes sense. Ultimately, like you take a look at a guy like Hopkins, yes, he'd be a great player for us for the next couple of years. But when you look at a guy like Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnson, these are guys who could potentially be premier weapons for the Giants offense for the next decade. So I don't know, Alex, I guess I'm curious to hear your thoughts because I know that you were really just really interested and seeing the Giants go after a guy like Hopkins. Look, I love DeAndre Hopkins. If you don't like DeAndre Hopkins, maybe there's you know some personal reasons or whatever, but like he's a tremendous football player, and that's objectively true. He is an amazing football player, and I love having amazing football players on the Giants. So yes, would I have wanted DeAndre Hopkins on the Giants? Absolutely. freaking lutely But the financial reasons, I understand those. You know, sometimes they're hard to work around. Um, and with that being said, it was never like, it was never like, you know, I wanted DeAndre Hopkins specifically. It was like, if we go out and get a draft or receiver in the first round instead, I'm, a hundred, I'm, I'm even more for that than trading for DeAndre Hopkins because you get a guy on a rookie deal with a fifth-year option who you can develop and mold over a longer period of time and develop chemistry. DeAndre Hopkins is like two years away from being like, you know, an older like Julio Jones. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's headed in that direction. He's not a long-term solution. I like long-term solutions at this point uh, for the Giants and knowing that like, okay, we can go out and get ourselves a future star if we can develop them and, and get them that, the, that experience uh, alongside some of our other playmakers. And that's a better solution. Oh, like objectively, that's the best case scenario. That's the way we'd like to go. Um, so am I upset about DeAndre Hopkins? No, because Jordan Ronan also said in that tweet, it's because the Giants are looking at, tw at 25 for receivers. You know what I mean? So the, the alternative is 
we get a young guy on a rookie contract who we can mold and, be, and hopefully develop into a really good player for us, and that's way better than going after Jandre Hopkins and his contract. I agree with that, and I, again, that's where it comes to building through the draft. We know that Joe Shane has said that many, many times since he got here last year. He wants to build this team through the draft. The Giants sort of contradicted themselves, you know, this offseason, going through uh, free agency and spending as much money as they did. They were actually the biggest spenders in free agency. However, a lot of that had to do with the fact that, of course, they made the Waller trade, and they also just extended Daniel Jones on a big contract. So that number was a little bit misleading for a lot of fans who looked at that and were like, oh no, the Giants made the same Jerry Reese mistake spent all that money after one postseason now I don't think that's exactly what it is it's just a lot of that money went to in-house talent and that's a big difference for the Giants now compared to what it was in 2016 but taking a look at what the Giants are doing man I think they are ready for the draft like they've set up their roster in a way where you know there's a there's still holes on it but there's still some time to add that talent through free agency with some veterans and also those main positions that they need to fill are very rich in the draft in terms of talent like cornerback like uh like wide receiver of course you could say that offensive line, that's the one that really isn't that rich in talent, but I think that the Giants have a plan in place and they're going to figure that out anyway. But some of these wide receivers, Alex, before we wrap, you know, what are you, you know, who are you looking at right now? Like the Giants are clearly looking at Jackson Smith and Jigba. They're clearly looking at Jordan Addison. Of those two guys, which one do you prefer and where are you starting to lean? Because I know that obviously in the beginning of this whole process, we were very much on the Jordan Addison train. A lot of people were. That hype train started to come off the tracks a little bit just because of his combine wasn't as impressive as people expected it to be, came in undersized, you know, ran a pretty slow 40, but now Jackson Smith and Jigba running a good time, doing everything the right way, having these meetings with the Giants. He seems to be flying up some draft boards. So quickly before we wrap, Alex, who are you leaning towards between those two players and who do you think is a better fit for Big Blue? Look, I love Jordan Addison. I love his versatility. I love his speed. I love everything he he's capable of doing. But I also like JSN. I, I think Jordan Addison just has more of a proven track record, but JSN is equally as talented. So I kind of like have to go with the track record over, you know, just a lack of a sample size just because you know what Jordan Addison is going to bring. But Quentin Johnston, too, dude's a freaking monster. Like, he has probably the most potential of anyone in this draft class. I can't sit here and really tell you who I'd prefer, but I think that I'd be happy with any of them. And I think that's kind of where we all boil down to is like any of those top four receivers if we can manage to get one that's a really good scenario and I think I'm going to be very happy um, if we end up with one of those guys because we need a top receiver at the end of the day and all of them have the qualities to be a wide receiver one Um, so any of those I'm all for it I'm game Um, I'll be excited and I think that you know they'll make the most of any player that they do get in this draft class yeah, and I'll say of those four guys that you just mentioned, I mean, you you mentioned three of them. The fourth one, I'm assuming you're referring to Zay Flowers. Of those four guys, the two who are the most pro-ready are the two that the New York Giants are really heavily scouting. Quinton Johnston, as talented as he is, as, as much potential as he has, he's, he needs some refinement. You know, he's probably going to take a year to really catch on. But a guy like JSN, his skill set is so translatable to the NFL that he's going to make an impact in year one. And I feel the same way about Jordan Addison. So I do think that's something to keep in, in mind because the Giants, making a lot of win now moves but also moves for the future here and I think that a lot of the moves that they made like Darren Waller is a player who you know They made that move so that they can win more games in 2023, but his contract is flexible. They're going to have him for many years afterwards. So that's a a move to win games now and later. Same thing with Paris Campbell and especially the same thing with Daniel Jones. A guy like Jackson Smith and Jigba or Jordan Addison also fits that mold because they can step in, make an impact, win you more games in year one and build towards the future for um, even more wins in 2024 and beyond. So I think that that that's the way that the Giants are leaning and probably the way I'm leaning as well. I think those guys are super talented. They make a lot of sense for Big Blue. And I think that either one of those guys instantly makes Daniel Jones a better quarterback, giving him that dependable threat over the middle of the field and a guy like Jackson Smith and Jigbo or a guy who can just run a full route tree in Jordan Addison. So I really like both of these guys. Super excited to see that the New York Giants are scouting the both of them, but I want to hear how excited you all are down in the comment section below. Get hyped about it. I know many of you are going to be thrilled to hear that the Giants are scouting receivers so heavily. So let's talk about it down below in the comment section. And again, make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode and subscribe to the channel if you are new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode we will catch you all in the next one have a good one and let's go giants